How often have you heard someone say to you, enjoy it while it lasts? I can't tell you the number of times that I've heard someone say that to me and my wife as they watch us struggle with three children and one away. Chasing those little boys around and we're trying not to have the house look like a disaster because of the tornadoes that follow these children. We try to clean up their clothes and their faces because of all the food that's smeared all over them. We wash our own clothes that are covered in dirt and snacks and everything else. And we're exhausted half the time. Enjoy it while it lasts. As parents and grandparents say to us, as they've seen their kids grow up, they see their grandkids, but not all the time. And they don't want us to miss or forget the blessings that are right in front of us in the busyness and the tiredness and the exhaustion of the moment. They don't necessarily say it because they're sad, but that they miss it, that they were so thankful for what God had given them in those moments of family. And if they had a chance to do it all over again, they would. Every poopy diaper. They would change it again because of the joy that those children and grandchildren have brought them. Enjoy it while it lasts. And Steph and I are the same way. After a busy day, we, we lay down and we think, man, they've grown a lot. They're so much bigger than they were last year. And I can't believe it's been a year since Jackson started pre-K. Where did the time go? We need to remember to enjoy these moments right now as it disappears so quickly. We give thanks to God for the blessings He's given us. Whether that's for children or grandchildren, or someone sent it to you when you're in the peak of your athletic career, and they said you enjoy it while it lasts, because pretty soon it's going to hurt when you get up. <laughs> your knees aren't going to work quite as good. Whatever the topic is that they say it to you, there's so many moments and things that God has blessed us with. And when that time has passed, it's so easy to look back and think, I did not appreciate all that God had poured out around me. And even in the hardest moments, I see the beauty of what God was doing in me in those challenges and those long nights when I was waking up again and again because the family was sick, or I went and picked up my neighbor from the highway because his car broke down, and we had that great conversation on the way back. Those moments of difficulty and challenge end up being the ones we probably treasure the most down the road. A policy of life that would be good to have, just in general, is to treasure the moments that you've been given. And I think we all recognize this, that we often underappreciate the moments as they're happening, and we look back and appreciate them even more in nostalgia as we look back. And we see others going through that in those stages of life that we've gone through, and we think, I pray they enjoy it. And so we end up saying, enjoy it while it lasts. Today in our reading, though, Paul takes us even deeper. He takes our Christian identity that he's been explaining through our Ephesians that we've been talking about here, that we are the church. He takes these people who he's taught the scriptures and, and shared with them that our life is more than moments. It's more than a lifetime. It is an eternity. Because we have a soul that was made by God to live forever, and we will live forever with God or without him. But these Ephesians, this group of Christians, and you gathered here, know your Savior. You have been called out of darkness into this wonderful light. You know who Jesus is. God himself made man so that you could know that your sins are forgiven. That you could believe in him and have eternal life with God. Because your sins have been paid for with the blood of God. And you know how I have redeemed life. You have been bought at a price to live with and for God. Which gives a totally different perspective on your moments, on your lifetime, on the things that you should enjoy right now, while they last, and for lasting value in your eternity. Paul is telling you that you are called for a higher purpose. You are part of the church guided by God's purpose for you. 
not simply for fun, not that fun is bad, not that simple pleasures are always wrong, but it's more than simply living to get the most little bit of joy out of every moment just for fun's sake, but everything has a purpose, a meaning behind it. Every choice has a consequence or a blessing based on whose will you're following. Jesus tells us in another place that this we know about the will of the Lord. The will of my Father is this, that all people believe in the one He has sent and have eternal life. This you know. How does your moments help you live out that will of the Lord for you and for everyone around you? Paul describes this guided life in this way. He begins by saying, consider carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise people, but as wise people. Make the most of your time because the days are evil. For this reason, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk on wine, which causes you to lose control. How are you wise? What defines wisdom here? It's not necessarily if you've got a 25 or above on your ACT. It doesn't have to do with maybe your, your job skill level or where you would rank yourself with the people around you. This wisdom comes from knowing and understanding the will of the Lord, which means your wisdom comes from God's Word. It comes from knowing who you are, what God has told you, what God has made you, through what Jesus has done, and how the Spirit has taught you to believe. And you understand more and more of that will as you, as you listen to God's Word, and you use that to help you decide what your choices will be each and every day. What is wise and what is unwise? Not just choosing on what feels right, but on what the Lord says in His absolute and amazing wisdom. The same one who has died for you calls you to live and walk with Him in His wisdom. He has a plan for you, a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope in a future. When Paul says, Make this effort to understand what the will is. Of course, we'll never know everything that God is doing in us. Our brains can't fathom all the things that God does in our lives. But what we do know is what Jesus tells us, that He wants us to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That we are wise for salvation because we know about Him. And that He wants all those around us to be saved. So this we know. So that helps us decide on a daily basis, how are we going to spend our time? What are we going to do with our lives? And Paul gives us one example of a thing not to do. He says, do not get drunk on wine, because it causes you to lose control. I know you probably have a lot of memories, some funny, of being drunk. Maybe not all of you. But many of us do. Some of them, I know drinking can be fun because it allows you to be a superman in some ways. It allows your responsibilities to kind of pass away and those hindering things fade away a little bit. The same thing is true of other things that can help you relax, like drugs and even just anything that you do that kind of allows you to escape or pull away from your responsibility and pretend like you don't have as much moral boundaries as you did before. But Paul says what's dangerous about that, or anything like drunkenness, is this. You lose control. You do let those guards down. And you may even do things that will affect your life for the rest of your life. But Paul's bigger thing is this. He steps back and says if you're looking at your life from that perspective that you have been bought by Christ, what should you do? Is losing control a good idea in this situation? What impression does it give to the people around you, especially if they know your Christian background? Not that they think you're perfect, but that who you are living for, and this opportunity, every opportunity and every moment, to share who God is for you and what He has done for you, and why 
we live each moment. It changes the way we think about a lot of the choices that we make. And God doesn't say that because he doesn't understand how hard it is sometimes to deal with life. I know it's nice to have an escape to run away from some of that responsibility when it's overwhelming. But instead, what does God tell us to do every time that we're overwhelmed by what we can't carry? Or what we don't want to deal with yet? What we're afraid of? What does Jesus say for us to do? All you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. It is light. It is easy. Jesus urges us to come to him and not be afraid because he will carry what you can't carry. Come to him in prayer. Come to my word and hear those promises and speak it to one another. And Paul tells us, so that's an example of what not to do. Not that you can't have those drinks every once in a while. You can't have things that are healthy for you. But do not lose control because your moments are priceless. As you are called by God to live for him in each moment. To give thanks for the love that you have been shown through Christ. And to share that love with the people around you. So that they know who your Savior is. And whose you are. Now Paul tells us now what to do. So that we're able to do that more and more. And do not get drunk on wine which causes you to lose control. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. By speaking to one another with psalms hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your hearts to the Lord, by always giving thanks for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul urges us to be filled with the Spirit, and how do we do that? By speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Where do we get those psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? From Him and His Word. And we sing out of gladness in our heart for what God has done for us. We sing out of joy for the mercy that God has poured out on us sinners who have made poor choices over and over again. Another reason why we often say, enjoy it while it lasts. Because maybe we feel we didn't enjoy it enough when we had that chance. But we know that grace and mercy that has covered our guilt and bought us from that unworthy state and made us priceless children of God. He has washed us clean in His blood and called us to be His children. And He urges us to sing about it. To encourage one another when we're struggling, when we're having a hard time, when we want to have fun. This isn't just pastor saying to you, Pastor, are you serious? You can't do anything fun. You don't want us to have these good times. No. And I do understand what that's like. I've had my fair share. But what I do know is just from my short life, that when I look back at the moments that I treasure are those that oftentimes were the hardest, those where God led me to trust in Him. And I was encouraged by the believers around me, by my parents, by my friends, by my grandparents, to listen to the Word of the Almighty to treasure his love. These are the ones that I think back to the most and say, enjoy that while it lasts. Because that will last for eternity. And Paul urges us to be filled with that spirit by singing songs like we do here, by hearing the word of the Lord. But it is here, but it's also at home as you open that Bible yourself and see what the word of the Lord is to make it a part of your life and your family's life to seek God to understand more and more what the will of the Lord is. Never to be satisfied that you know everything, but to dig in that word. To hear God himself speak to you and help you understand your confusing life. And all of these things coming at you from different directions, and you don't know what to make from it. The Lord urges you, come to me in prayer. Listen to my word. Treasure it. Be wise for salvation. Do what I am telling you, just like Jesus said in the gospel. I am the bread of life, the one who eats of me and drinks my blood will live. It never runs out, brothers and sisters. So you are guided by a higher purpose in your life. Every moment is a gift that you have. And moments go quickly. 
And it's easy to get filled with the busyness of the day, of the stress of the moment, of all of the things coming at you and trying to make sense of everything. I know it's hard. I struggle with it every day. Not just with the three little crazy boys that I have running around and all of the different diagnoses and, and all of the things that my family and friends and you are going through. But yet, in each and every moment, this is what we can do. We can sing the praises of our God who has saved us and died for us and has given us these moments, good and bad, hard and easy, to praise Him. Because you know that in everything, God is working with you and for you and in you to bring you to eternal life. That you can enjoy it while it lasts because you know that you will live forever with Him. Heaven. Let us take charge of these moments with God's help. Let us pray to Him that He helps us treasure the moments that we have, that we don't lose control, that we don't run away, but that we grab His responsibility, not trusting in our own wisdom or strength, but in the Lord's strength and wisdom and love that He has so poured out on us. And let us do this together by speaking to one another the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, glorifying God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.